we've done in all kinds of problems that they cook it. We ain't got veterans money and one thing or another for this and that and all kinds of things. I realize that it takes a world of money. A world of money. Is this home kept up fairly well? Really well. My husband wanted me to be sure and ask that question. <laughs> he was concerned. The biggest problem that I see is uh, maybe they request the nurses to look too many hours in one day. And uh, uh, they, that, if they're dedicated people to be working here anyway. And it takes a little strength for them to do that. It's, it's not easy to be a nurse to, in some categories, especially. But no matter where you're at, you've got to be just kind of about almost dedicated to that uh, fact. And, uh, but to be working 12, 16 hours a day is too much. That's what I'd see. And most of these girls have got kids and family of their own. They don't, they don't just it's not just a job here, because well, they just don't go home and go to sleep. They've got other things to do, too. And it's the same thing. They built a new building down here to take on, make places for new ones. And it's been laying there. Maybe you don't know about it. No. But that's... So it's vacant. The new building's vacant? Mm -hmm. Because they say it's got mildew in it. And it was very dangerous. But, uh, and to get something done with it, well, uh, I apparently, and I would say that I don't know a damn thing about it, for that year, but apparently the builders probably built it in the rain. And that's why you can get mildew in a building. But it is, they say, dangerous, real dangerous, especially with the insulation we have had down through the years. But billions and billions of our houses do the same thing. They simply didn't dangerous the molds yeah. but uh, hard to get rid of only and the the guy that built it should be uh, held to the fact that he's got the correct uh, but getting that done is something else you see the big dogs up the line they do a lot of things but they do it, and lots of it, uh, take more money than they need. <laughs> and I see, well, you know, people that come making hundred thousand dollars, and then, ooh, they horn swaggle and take another hundred thousand. No, I'm not talking about the man. I'm yeah. talking about big dogs, lots of places, and. Uh, and then we pull it back that they were going to uh, not tax everybody. The only way you ever get them paid is to pay them. Get it from the tax some way or other. The only way you're going to get that thing done. I don't care what kind of tax they do. But, uh, most generally all the uh, politicians if they pass anything, they do it to favor them in that category. Uh, and 
they say, well, we say we're that little guy, that poor guy, that he don't make anything. But how do you get practice? It's like I say, uh, my grandson just got back from my Iraq, and he said, we're doing a lot of good. But in the BFW, I think the magazine the other day said the same thing. We're doing a lot of good. But we're reporting all the bad things. And nobody reports to anything. And why good. is that? Yep, the reporters are reporting that, see? I don't know whether you read the last BFW I got on the wall down there. BFW American Lady Moon, and that was almost the first line on the thing back this. But we, all we get is reported somebody got killed. Blew up. Now, what do you think that does to people back home? Mom and me and the wife. And yet, that's the way they've been doing it all through our atmosphere. They've been doing it all the way through. It's no good. What does it do to wife back here when she said, oh, somebody, well, that could be my husband. Now they they can, they got real good contacts anymore. Well, hell, they, but uh, my grandson, my, his wife, she got one of them things you do like this. And if he's at a certain place, well, they can get him on the screen. <laughs> But, uh, I said, you, what's that one cost you? Well, it was $2,700, but, my God, that's something. I've heard of some of them been that on a telephone bill, calling, you know, I, I didn't believe in calling the tall amount, and hell, we never called back and forth during World War II, we just didn't. This, the day has changed. And that's one of the biggest problems with the kids today. They've got a different world to live in. It's a damn hard world to grow up in anymore. We've got so many drugs. We, I still say I lived in the good old days when things, depression days, were there. When we made a dollar a day. And by golly, a dollar a day, but you've got to go down on Saturday night. Dad might give you a nickel or a dime. And you could get an ice cream cone or a dollar cup. And you got to be tickled to death. And you had three movies at the Little Towns. Didn't cost you to go see that. It was free. And if you wanted cigarettes, you rolled up some corn silk. <laughs> piece of paper, and my God, you smoked it. Boy, you was a big boy. <laughs> uh, it's a different day. That they, yeah, and they've got problems today to grow up with. they got so damn many things in the schools today to do that they got a pair of knapsack to put on their back to carry the damn books on. Mm -hmm. They don't need that all that damn stuff. And, uh, but what are you going to do to solve it? I was going to ask you, like, what would you say is your most vivid memory then of North Platte when you went through there? I mean, what would you... Well, I would say, like I say, it was a stopping off place where they let you off and you eat everything that they had around there. And boy, you you went without. It was your own fault. And they, they we we've been told they did not accept any money. They wouldn't take any. No. Uh -uh. Nope. Not that I remember, anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, I, something else ran through my mind a while ago, and I can't remember what it was. Do you have anything that comes to you? 
Uh, let's see. Could you tell us when you went through there? What year did you go through on your... Well, it was on the way out. I ended your up in November 1943. November. Was there snow on the ground? Well, I don't know. That's too far back. Okay. When I come back, I'll be discharged on the 19th day of May of 1946. I, I know what it was I was going to ask you. You said you went in, you know, you saw the destruction from the bomb. You know what? Well, mostly I think from probably the bomb effects were, had been B-29 effects. I think. You didn't see the A-bomb? No. Yeah. You weren't in Nagasaki or Hiroshima? Um, no, that I recall. Did you, did you and your fellow sailors, did, did you have always confidence that, that we were going to win? Or was that yeah. up and down, up and down? No question about it. You we knew were, no matter what. I mean, even we, when you were outnumbered and all of that, you we still... Were determined to win. Mm -hmm. We had an article, we had one paper the other day and I got See that somebody else got email or something from Tokyo Road. Maybe yeah, somebody. I was going to ask you about her too. And we love it. I said we love to hear it because she was the only one that played good old American music. And yeah, we couldn't get any other way. Mm -hmm. I know she said we will, she might name our ship. We'll thank you for something to the back. Your girl going out with somebody else for life didn't bother us a bit. Hell, we know we in the South Pacific. Mm -hmm. That was one of them things. Mm -hmm. It didn't bother me a bit. Now, some people it might have. Mm -hmm. And uh, I see men run on more of it to the fact that they did honor the fact. And it was, and they were a bunch of screwballs that put her behind the bar for seven years or whatever it was because they lied about it to put it, get it in there. You ever seen anything on this? I got all the stuff. And you know, all you have to do is lock on into it. You guys, you guys got time to go back to my room, don't you? Yeah, but I got to take the picture first. You have? Yes, Hell, I, I, I don't have any pictures. <laughs> well, well I'm going to take, take your picture. picture. So, I'm going to take your picture. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if that's all right. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how, long, how long have you been living here? Well, I've been... I got a blood clot in my head. And I don't know what what was the reason whatsoever for that. Uh, I never, never found out what, what was. But my grandson was... Uh, Uh, okay, wife was over there and and she thought that well that'll do <laughs> uh, uh, she thought well, something wrong with grandpa and but, uh, I, hell I'd, I'd just been to the cemetery I always put up the flag at the cemetery and took it down overnight and uh, at the West Point Cemetery. And, uh, you put it up every day and took it down every night? Yeah. Oh my God. And, uh, but, so how, uh, how long did you do that? I mean, how many years? Well, well, I don't know how. I never kept track of that. I just, I did. For years? <laughs> yeah. Okay. For years. I mean, they've been growling about this, burning the flag, you know, for years, and we've had all kinds of problems and that and bringing it and getting it. Getting it uh, they always, I don't know, hollered so much about the spitting on the boys in Vietnam or something. And hell, I didn't ever see any of that at all. I said, you guys ought to come home and you ought to be wearing your outfits and one thing and that. They never did. They just didn't. Mm -hmm. We was proud to wear our outfits. 
they said it's been dangerous. That's why they don't do that. And, uh, but my grandson, daughter, her grandson's wife, said there's something wrong with Grandpa. And I, I took down the flag and I went to go in the restaurant, found that way, and I met my, my son. And the way, going that way, and, you know, it just it just mile around there, and make it a mile and a half out of the way. And, well, I said, he said, well, you know how I've come out with that? Well, I said, hell, I've been taking the flag down. Well, I don't know, but anyway, they called my young woman and packed me off. I didn't know a damn thing, never even knew the sickening about what, that the ambulance come and pick me up, damn thing, until the city had me down there at Quincy in the hospital. And then name was Dr. Reynolds. The officer said I had a blood clot in the head. What? Well, Boy, don't do that. Don't know a damn thing. What the reason of my call? I did. I say, when people get that way, some of them make it and some of them don't. But they wanted, he wanted to even take me on to St. Louis. And, but I was taking some kind of drug that they couldn't, didn't do down there. So, just put me in rehab or something over here. And I stayed there about a month or so. This was 1955. Or five. Oh, five or nine. And then at oh, six, I didn't. But I come in, it must have been. So you've just been here like May. a couple of years, just a little over yeah, yeah. 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 Well, it's a beautiful. Oh, it's just, it's just it's it's really, really nice. Oh. We can we got the chapels down here, mm -hmm. beyond this place here. Where you guys parked that back here? Way back over there. Yeah. And, and then, uh, well, we thought this other building was this, yeah. or over there. I guess actually, because yeah. we walked. Well, the visitor center is back over here, where people can stay over there, ten dollars a night. And oh, that's, people that's good. Can come there. That's real good. And, uh, we dedicated that. They redid that to us. Some guy in my spring. And, uh, like I say, they have, we have, we'll have a dance band in here. Saturday night, I believe, will be coming up. They have a dance band here most every month. We, we just kept on the table one thing and I didn't feel they hardly any of the dance anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're enjoying the music. But uh, they at least got a line dancers from Warsaw and Kiplock, Iowa. They may be doing that kind of stuff. But that's exercise for them. I guess they do that yeah. lots of times. And then, like I say, Bushel comes down and McComb, they was here the other day. Payson was down here. They hold bingo games. Most generally over the look they used to do it in here. There was a bingo card way back there. They uh -huh. pick them up. But uh, they hold most of them over there. Most, we got single unit bingos at like our Elmore. And then they have uh, flatters over here. That's more so alcohol barely more so and yeah you are right me okay the i can't write fast enough the battle of lady go we was involved 992 ships oh my all word all nations this is japanese all nations british in australia 992 ships oh my god and but then we got caught there uh, with a Japanese shogo, they d decided that they had to do something, so they sent their battleships out after to get us. See, because we was I was on a baby aircraft carrier, and we we were on an air. I'm sorry, aircraft carrier. Aircraft carrier. Which one? Well, I was on the baby uh, Fanshawe Bay. 
see the E70. Fan shell. Fan shell. F-A-N-S-H-A-W. Okay. Okay. Fan shell. Fan shell. CVE-70, yeah. I should have gotten more my other hat. Okay, there it is. And they, of course, it had all of our, all of our squadrons. You see, we would take, make one invasion, and then we would, that uh, squadron would be taken off, and they would be relieved, and then we'd come on with another squadron. This is uh, the plane that flew up with our ship. And this was the Battle of the Gulf? Lady, Lady, Lady Gulf. Lady Gulf. Now, the first invasion was at Saipan, and that was with Task Force. Well, and I can't tell you it's Task Force. But that was DC-68 Squadron was at Saipan. And then we went... I was, wasn't not there at Saipan. I didn't come up there until after they got back from there. And then I, we went to Mortai and Halamahara with B Squadron DC-66 then. Now what did you do on the ship? What was your... I was a number one loader on 40 millimeter twin mount. 40 millimeter gun. Starboard side right after the smokestack. Big smokestack. And my job was to get the ammunition and put it in the gun. That's all. Uh, what kind of gun? I'm sorry, I can't write that fast. 40, 40 millimeter. Okay. Did they name us? I'll go get it. 40 millimeter. 40 millimeter. Uh, Cannon. 40 millimeter number. Uh, twin mount, yeah. Twin mount. They had shells and they come in clips, see? About like this. Uh, about that long, see? And they, I, I don't even remember how many it was in a clip, see? I mean, mm -hmm. Probably six, I imagine. And all of my job was, was when you was firing, you had to look and see where the ammunition, they was number one, second loader, handing up the ammunition to me, and then put it in the gun, and then reach back. That's where you would look, see. That's all the time you did, because the time you got the next bunch of shells, you was, they was gone. And these, this was when suicide planes would be coming in. And you had to do something, see. And that's the way it was. Did they hit any of you hit your ship? We didn't get hit by a suicide plane, our ship. But we lost two carriers and three destroyers in one day there at Lady Gulf. This was all in the middle. Uh, returning MacArthur back to the Now what year was this? 1944. So you lost two carriers and three destroyers? Yeah, in one day. You better eat. You never have anything to eat. Yeah, it's okay. You can quit talking. <laughs> I don't want to miss anything. What are you girls writing up, anyway? We're from Henderson County. Mm -hmm. You know where that's at? Well, it's up the river on the other side of Bushnell somewhere or somewhere. So it, it's uh, right on the other side of where Burlington, Iowa is. Burlington? Okay. Between kind of and Monmouth. And we have a, a book club that has promoting reading. Mm -hmm. And we've chosen um, a book this year that talks about North Platte. 
and so we're so throughout the year we're encouraging people to read this to read this book. It's uh, called Once Upon a Town about the North Platte Canteen. So uh, one of the ways we wanted to promote it was Virginia wrote the letter to the editors in the surrounding papers to see if we could find some veterans who had actually gone through North Platte and talk to them about their experience. And then Virginia is writing it up and putting it in the papers. So you, now, where did you hear about it? I don't know. I read, read it in some paper. I wondered where the hell you girls were coming from. <laughs> Well, what papers I, do you get down here? Where I'm just I read it at? Well, I take the Hancock County Journal. Probably the Quill. Hancock yeah, Quill? The, Hancock. Uh, the Carthage paper? Yeah, get the Hancock County Journal. Jo Joyce Warrington is the, writes that thing up. And, but uh, that's, I didn't know where the hell you guys was coming from and what it was all about. Except for the fact I know I did call somebody and that was a number, I reckon. Right. Well, we um, we have talked to two gentlemen from Burlington. One was in the Navy and one was in the Air Force. kinds of books that I kept track of and one thing and another. You see, we started the first reunion in 1979 of the USS Fanshawe Bay. And then we've had, every two years we run them. That's the third, the third reunion. Second, and, uh, second, and fourth. And Where that, were you raised? I'd, West Point. I was born and raised in West Point, Illinois. My address is, was changed to Basque West in nine one one. Didn't didn't move or anything. That's two miles. Two miles straight north of West Point. How old were you when you went into the to the Navy? What year Eight, did you 18, go in? Eighteen. What what year did you go in? Nineteen forty three. Why did you choose the Navy? Well, now I'll tell you. You see, I had written the Army Air Corps test in high school while I was still in high school. So they sent me over to Chinook Air Force Base at Rantoula to take that, your physical. And I went through that. And one of the things that they did, you had to bring a pencil down to the end of your nose, see, like that. Mom had always told us, kids, would never do that or you'll be like that old woman that was cross-eyed. You never could tell where she was going, right? but she knew where she was going. And you, you're liable, you get cross-eyed. Mom had told us kids, and you know, I couldn't do that at all. And 
Didn't do didn't bring that pencil down to the end of my nose. So they said, go home and practice that. Well, <laughs> after, <laughs> after I had got out of high school, a buddy of mine, and uh, we thought, well, that's just, we're going to go into the army. We're going to jump on the stage. The bus was leaving for Chicago. We just, what did we know when the date was and all that? She doesn't write her And so we thought we were going to even go into the army. And we jumped on that bus with them guy in army and got the was going. We were going to go in the army. We went up to Chicago and we say running us around with a lot of no clothes on them mostly. run into him, he said, what did you go into? I said, I went into the Navy. Well, he said, I did too. Here we was going to go into the Army. The first thing they stamp on you when you're induction set up is Army. Then you pass that test in the Navy and then the Marines. So we had all three stamps on her. So you could have gone into any three of those? Yeah. But like I say, we had to decide right then and there, and so we both did. You've never heard that before, no. you either? Well, you know, we was volunteers. Right. So whatever you told them, they stamped you with? Hmm? No, yeah. you had all three of them on there. And they just, yeah. But you did, when you went around, they stamped them, and that's the way they did. And then you got a choice as to where you went. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, so we went, we went home for weeks, I think it was, and then we headed to, the, it was Farragut, Idaho. We were supposed to be report to Farragut, Idaho, and for, Basic for boot camp. In the middle of the for the day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we went to these places. One somewhere, I guess, on the train. Because we went out of, I think, Birmingham or Fort Madison, and headed. Farragut, Idaho, that's where the boot camp was out there. And uh, they must have announced, I don't know for sure how the hell they would know it, but they must have said they were going to stop at a certain place. I don't know, where, where is this, Lincoln, Nebraska? No, North, North Platte. North Platte. Well, somewhere up there, on the northern route. Anyway, that's where we trained with. And they must have said that we were going to stop for so long and get off for so long. And that's what we did, of course, and they fed us all kinds of stuff there. And no matter what, when you was coming or going, I think these girls run around the clock. Yeah, they did. And no matter when you come through there. Seven days a week. And, uh, Five hours a day. And I don't, I don't recall what, what they did beat us, anything at all about that. I mean, it's been too damn long ago, but I know we got plenty to eat. And uh, it, 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 some of the boys, there was a tavern over across the street somewhere, and some of them, they said, well, "Boy, you head over there." I don't think I was over. I don't think I did, because I don't know whether they. Or they might have sold it to me anyway. But anyway, some got beer, and then they could head back. But you just had so much time, you know. Right. So that's all that counted for anything. If you made it back to get on the train, that's all that counted. That no, never made any difference whether you come if you take the took the northern route. 
I suppose I went through it here the other day. We got it on the train going to my ship's reunion in at Burlington, Iowa. We got on Burlington and we headed out through Iowa, Nebraska, whatever, and headed for Denver, Colorado. You don't go through North Platte anymore. You don't? Mm -mm. You they? go down the southern part of uh, Nebraska. You cross over at Omaha and go through Lincoln. Yeah, well, that was fun. Yeah, was and McCook. Well, I didn't know. They changed it. They don't even run uh, passenger trains through North Platte Oh, they don't? No. Amtrak just runs one route. <laughs> That's that what, but I know we went through Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she did. But uh, I didn't know the names of the places. So you, you went through North Platte on your way to um, boot camp? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you go on the way back when you were coming home? Yeah, we come through because we returned from uh, Everett, Washington, and I were discharged up there, Bremerton, Washington. And that would be the northern route, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, when in, in the service after so much time, I think I've come home, and if I recall, we went out of Kilpuck Highway, but we still took that northern route. How long did you serve? Were you there through the end? Yep. You see, we was on the way to Adak, Alaska, get our foul weather gear. And uh, they dropped the atomic bomb. And now one of the, our pilots stated this back when I got his, I got a lot of this stuff that were written down. He, did, he took the last military flight of World War II, but I didn't know whether it was so or not. But he how, did what? How he didn't know anything about it, whether he took the last military flight of World oh. War II. How could you figure that out? Yeah, how could you figure that out? I mean, I don't doubt his word, but uh, how well, did you figure it out? Uh, that's what I wondered. How we went. I've got, I've got a million of stuff. You have to read it to get it all. I'll give you a copy. Of it. No so after you finished at Farragut, they let you come home for a little while. After boot camp, then we come home and went back. To like I say, we went left out of my girlfriend and her sister and boy went over and jumped up the highway and we left out of there. And went back to Farragut to her gunnery school for four weeks, I believe it was. And that, after that, but then. I was to report to Bremerton, Washington. And they, I left on the ship then for Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor. You went to Pearl Harbor? Mm hmm And what year was that when you were there? 1943. So what was it like then, at, at that time? Well, that was... Push. Everybody was worried. Uh, the United States was worried a long time about their being attacked, you know, because they had been right after they pulled the Japanese and pulled this kind of a deal on Pearl Harbor and locked them mold to death. Right. Uh, mainly due to the fact, uh, no, because they'd been told that there's something like this might happen, but nobody believed that such a thing could happen. But 
It did. So there was, excuse me, a little bit flurry about everywhere somebody coming in, either in the United States or where. But uh, we kept, took, I took my ship there, put me on that, this is like I say, at the side pan, then they took on uh, some uh, a new squadron, and I went on that same date. I can't recall what they, I got all that stuff in there. Piece of paper in my room because I got billions of books that way. The harbor itself was still pretty uh, torn up. What? The harbor itself was pretty torn up still. No, well, we never noticed that. At all. We were there. They did. Uh, you don't see, but just parts of this and that. How many um, sailors were on your ship? On you, like on your ship? How many? Well, we usually run about 900. And there were at this other at this Gulf War, there were 992 ships. 992 involved in all those nations. Oh, right, but 900 to a, a thousand to a ship. That's a lot of people. Well, like I say, but. Different kinds Some of ships. Some different size. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Destroyers, oh, battleships, aircraft carriers. Yeah. I don't know all of them. <laughs> what carriers went down in the Gulf of Lady? The USS Gamber Bay. Yes, St. Lowe. That was in our task force. Our task force. And then we lost three destroyers. I can't give you those. Jo no, USS, that's all right. USS Johnson was one. So did the Japanese re retaliate by sending... I know that you said they sent planes, but were there also ships that came? Oh, yeah. Were, was it equal? I mean, did they have... No. They outnumbered our task force. We was in task force 77.43 under the rear riding spray. And that was 13 ships. The Japanese had 23 ships of battleships, cruisers, and destroyers. You know, and they could travel twice as fast as we could because we as carriers, we did. Now some of our destroyers can run at same speed, <coughs> but not carriers. And. Uh, so he was going as fast as he could. And uh, <coughs> at the engine room sent up notice to the old man that he was getting hot. Well, the old man said, well, piss on him. And that, that, that. Oh, they actually <laughs> did? <laughs> no. Oh, I was going to say maybe they cooled it down that way. <laughs> want some more of this stuff, we better have some more to drink. I'm going to go get, get a refill. We'll go get one. Okay. Again. Uh, oh, you will. Yes, I will. Well, I'll be down. I put on my... They even stuck my cell phone in. I thought maybe 
you might call me, I might give you that number. I'm very seldom ever call it the damn thing because I never pack it. I don't want to be interrupted. Thank you for the, uh, for the drink. Yes, thank you very much for lunch and the drink. Yeah, the hamburger was wonderful. That was really good. Mm -hmm. Really good. So did your buddy that you went in with, were you able to serve with him, or did he get sent no, off somewhere he, else? He was... He went on to another ship. In fact, I think he served most of the time in the National Guard or something. Don't write anything about that because I can't remember. <laughs> okay, but he went on another ship. I can say that. Yeah. Okay. Did you have any brothers or sisters, that, other brothers or anything that was in the service? I had one brother. My older brother. I served with George Patton. Really? In uh, Germany. George Patton was having trouble getting ambushed over in Germany. This was after they invaded over there. And they, were, they was getting hung up in these hedge fences. Like these hedge fences over there like we had back here. Now, they also had hedgehogs and one thing and another had metal things, and that's a different kind of thing. But this was playing head fences, and they'd run into them with their tanks, and they'd get hung up. So they were in the damn tank the Germans. And they were in them with their tanks or whatever they were shooting with. And they'd ambush them there, and that put them in trouble. So, my brother thought, he told his commanding officer, why don't you take some dozer blades and cut them, make them real sharp, and put the V like that, and put them on the tanks, in the front of the tanks. And he said, put them on that. And by, so they started doing that with a bunch of them, a lot of them. And that helped them out a lot. Hmm. And my brother also, George always liked to be in French. And uh, he didn't back off from nothing. You can't say that he wasn't afraid of anything because he always wanted to be there. And he had fixed, one tank was fixed up so he could carry all these maps. He always wanted all the maps with it. That was the biggest trouble. You see, Bradley and all them other boys in, in the Battle of Bulls didn't know where the hell they was going. Yeah, we read that, read that. Because the Germans had captured American uh, jeeps and one thing or another and, and their clothes and they were standing there. Uh, so this you went that way because that's the way you directed things you know, with the suit for the service. And they and wind up in the wrong damn town. Some of the boys I talked to and know they got the wrong town. They didn't know where the hell he was at. George always wanted to know where he was at. He did that to some of the boys that in, that landed in Africa. And there, in one of the invasions there, Sicily. One of the boys was right neighbor boy down home. He said he had all them maps. They had carried him on the map back. And then they went for one invasion there. And they let him off in the, in the water. And it was pretty deep. Pretty deep. A lot deeper than what he could walk in. And he said, I just went down and down. He said, all that weight to do. And, but he said, I walked out. Mm -hmm. I come out, well, I was out. But that's what George wanted to know, where he was always at. You, you, you got to be, if you was in a foreign country, you're in hell of a shape if you yeah. don't know where you're at. Right, exactly. And 
So he fixed one of the tanks to carry the maps? Oh, yeah. Yep. And one of the tanks was fixed that way. And of course, this was forward command. You know, there's lots of different ones that way. You ain't just one thing to do this, but there were various ones that got to do this. And then, what else? So he was on the front lines then, it sounds like. Yeah, the weather. Um, lots of times. Mm -hmm. He didn't, didn't make the first invasion in the uh, like some of the others did. But, uh, did he come home? Yeah. Then they, George wanted to they be always cleaned up in one thing. So they tore all the guts out of one tank. And so George could have a shower and clean up. <laughs> you, know, you know, he didn't want to go to the bathroom out like the, lots of people had to do with more as well. So all the rest of that, George, he wanted to be cleaned up. And so he had that first class. But you have was to he do. respected by, like with your brother, did he, re, you know, with his oddness, did he, was he respected as far as a commander? No, no, no. He, he wasn't just, respected? No, he was just a plain old soldier. No, but I mean, did, but did your brother respect Pat? Oh, yeah. Did he? I didn't know. Now, that's one thing about us boys in the South Pacific. Oh, we get word, they'd print a, a newsletter or something to us, and they put them out there so often. Boy, we got no, the world was your back. Uh, he was going, he was going, in every report you heard of, he was going, the only thing. We did hear sometime ago, I think this was probably after the war, they would slap one of them guys, but what the hell are you going to do with somebody that he went berserk? Mm -hmm. And that's the only way, but that's the only way to get him out of there. Mm -hmm. And it's, but it don't sound very good. Mm -hmm. But you got to do something that way. War is war. And that's all there is to it. General MacArthur then was, what, what were your feelings about him? <laughs> I was mad for almost 17 years. I kept thinking, well, what in the hell? I know where he was at. He was sitting on a cruiser, a cruiser battleship, back there. And they, they decided, well, they know this Japanese was coming. They were fleet was coming down to this thing. And they, oh, they're going to come broad, broadside to us. He would just sit there and let them Japanese do that, see? Didn't move. They just sat back there. Oh, boy, when they got so close, then they could just blast away at us. Didn't follow them at all. Man, but let them fire while they was going out there. That's what you call both sides. But, and I thought, what in the hell? How come we didn't have some help? That son of a bitch could have helped us a lot more. Well, they had something to run 30 knots feet, the same speed as these other guys that crossed me. And he didn't do it. And then I go, well, you know where well, there's thousands of army boys that's already landed. See, MacArthur hadn't walked the shore yet. You, you think that he landed the first day that they went in. They don't do that kind of thing. They don't, they don't do that. But, you know, here he comes and announces, and you see it in the papers and all that. Okay? He's walking the shore. They landed. Well, they'd already landed some time ago. Most of the boys. But like I say, uh, I got to something. I got here to think about a lot of other boys besides me, little old me. There. So what you're saying is your group of ships are going like this, and mm -hmm. the Japanese are coming like this, and he's sitting back here with better firepower, he could have come up and helped you. Well, and chased them. Yeah. Other okay. than just fire broadside. 
So you said you felt that way for 17 years. What changed your mind? Yeah. So I got to thinking. Little old me is nothing to say. There's thousands of others that's got to be saved. And he is the in charge. So, and then the Japanese had no reason to turn around and run. No reason whatsoever. They could never run us. Never run us. But they carried us on for two hours and 59 minutes. They did what? Two hours and 59 minutes. They fired on, is that what you're saying? Yeah. And, like I say, you know, they could try and run the place as well, fast. And, yep. and they decided, with these boys in the air, which did load up the bomb from the army, to fly there, after that guy, I told him that one of the pilots pulled a gun on him. You know, mm -hmm. No, you out. haven't told him that, that story. Tell us that story. Well, the, then after the pilots had no place to land, we, we was being chased. They, they bombed all the, when they get ready uh, for the boys to go ashore. And, the airfields, I know. and so how could they land anywhere? Couldn't have no ships you could see. You got to land somewhere in, in an airfield. Well, they'd land through them potholes. Maybe they can make it, maybe they wouldn't. Well, this one pilot did. Look up, Commander Look up. And, and then he caught him, found out this officer and an army. He wanted them bombs. I thought I told you that. He wanted them bombs. And that officer said, no, you can't have them bombs in the army. Those are what? For well, the army. These all kinds of ammunition stuff. Anything would blow up. No, you can't have them stuff. Well, this pilot, he said, pull the gun on him then. And he said, I've got it written in the store. I'll give you that pretty soon. Uh, pulled a gun on him. I said, tied him up to a tree. And they went ahead and loaded their planes with these bombs, whatever they could get, anything to blow up. And of course, I asked, wrote to this guy pilot later on, and he never I questioned the fact that he tied him up to a tree but it implied that he tied him up to a tree so he put a gun on him and I'm going to take that and, but he never would say no he didn't didn't tie him up to a tree so he didn't get court martialed but or anything he, for that he was yeah the armor brought court martial against him for doing such a thing and then the Navy gave him they later retracted this and then the Navy gave him a medal for bravery. Hmm. This pilot was one of the sea officers slapping at different quarters and then enlisting personnel to the ship. The officers who slept in a different place. It was the same thing with the black boys. They was board ship. And this was course, segregation of course. And the black boys, they slept in one of the black sex, and that's all. And um, us enlisted personnel, we slept in our and the officers slept in their quarters. But this one officer, he did come down and play cards with us and poker with one thing or another. He associated, but he was coming down to play with us. That's the way he did the bullshit. Of course, we knew him then that way. We, so, 
but uh, he was very, and he always invited me to the, to the Mardi Gras every year, they said, for me to come down and never did go. But uh, he was held that uh, 60th, 50th anniversary of the Pearl Harbor, I guess it was. In New Orleans, I was down there for that. But uh, and he always invited me down there. We had that in ships reunion that down. And the National Museum is tends to go to Florida, I believe, but they the tend to go all the time. We were just playing one of them was tied up and wrapped this and that in the museum there. I think I've got a brick down there, of course, you can send me money, hundred dollars for a brick. I never did find it, but I reckon it's down there, but there's thousands of them. You know. What's your memory of the day when they dropped the bomb? Where, what, was, what were your feelings or thinking at that time? We was on our way to ADAC, Alaska to get foul weather gear to come in and invade Japan from the north. You had to get cold with it. This was cold land. Well, you didn't survive very long, especially if you got in the water. So, more than and so we was on the way to get back. And then the bomb was dropped. And uh, so then we went ahead and, like I say, one of the boys said he carried the last military flight of World War II, but then we proceeded, and we was the first aircraft carrier to enter Tokyo Bay, Amanetto Keo and Shiji Ban, for the signing of the peace treaty. Oh, you were? You were on that ship? No. No, that's the oh. battleship. Oh, okay. Right. But that's where they did the signing. Yeah, I'm sure. And, uh, they, uh, but then we, there was one of the officers who wouldn't sign the, say that he would sign these peace treaty and they bet. And some of the gunner's mates met in a little schoolhouse out in the country where it was. There wasn't much left in where Japan because it had been bombed and bombed and dropped the atomic bomb. And, but, uh, B-29s had been bombed everywhere too, and, uh, but they met in a little schoolhouse, and uh, they didn't know about that. So this gun was made, he's a gun was made first class in the uh, ship. And, uh, they didn't know he had his pistols in the machine gun too. After all, these Japanese was suicide planes almost just now previous to this before, and they was going armed to the teeth because they had uh, spears and for the kids and everybody to kill people. And he didn't know about that. He was a little leery about doing it, but he had to, and he was ready to shoot anything. They got by with it and said they didn't have no problem. And, uh, and why were they, why were they at that schoolhouse? Because one of these officers wouldn't sign the surrender papers. See, well, they, our officer or their officer? Their officers. Oh, I see. And now this was before the main big signing. You know, you see, they had to agree that they was going to told you or whoever is a big wheel. They signed it, but the other guys had to agree. And such a thing. But so did he point his machine gun at him and say no, he wrote a sign? No, he well, sort of pretty much so. But they was going to, and the trigger was ready to be pulled if anything funny come up. But they didn't have any trouble. And it's like I was later on, I walked on them and just got a picture. Well, I had my camera all the time during World War II, but I never took any pictures against the law. But oh, it was against the law? Yeah. 
to take any pictures. Hmm. But uh, I got a picture with a Japanese girl walking down the street. Yeah. So you did. You ended up going back to Japan after the bomb had been dropped. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Was, I didn't pick we, up on that. We were the first aircraft carrier there to enter. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okinawa, Keio Hanshi Bad, and we, but they didn't have any water. Some of the boys. Now, wait a minute. You're the first aircraft carrier to enter Tokyo Bay? Yeah, Amaneto Keio Hanshi Japan. That's oh, where no. they signed this PD. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> Tokyo Bay, now go real slow. Okinawa. Okinawa. Amaneto Keio Hanshi Japan. Hanshi. Mm. Okay. 